this reading is the is from censored number 129 the God project uh, some biblical corrections by William J Eisenman DD there are over 2,000 denominations calling themselves Christian and all in one way or another claim to get their tenets and beliefs from the Bible many have turned the Jesus of the Bible into some sort of wimpified do-gooder wanting to spread peace all over the world and save the world but the Bible says Jesus did not come to spread peace but to bring a sword Matthew 10 verse 34 a man's enemies shall be those of his own house Micah 7 verse 6 Jesus also did not come to destroy the law as some so-called Christians claim Matthew 5 verse 17 Romans 2 verses 13 through 23 we know sin by the law Romans 2 verse 13 and 20 Romans 13 verse 3 no excuse me uh, uh, Romans 13 verse 3 and 20 I believe the law is knowledge of sin Romans 3 verse 31 do we then make void the law through faith God forbid yea we establish the law Romans 5 verse 13 but sin is not imputed when there is no law Romans 6 verse 15 what then shall we sin because because we are not under the law but under grace God forbid Romans 7 verse 12 calls the law holy the law is spiritual Romans 7 the carnal mind is enmity against God for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be Romans 8 verse 7 what is real a real Christian the Bible makes it clear that a real Christian follows Jesus and has the spirit of Christ Romans 8 verses 9 through 11 and 14 those in the flesh cannot please God Romans 8 verse 8 a Christian is not to conform to this world Romans 12 verse 2 this is not God's world it is the devil's world 1 Corinthians 4 verse 4 Ephesians 2 verse 2 those who would censor or call this clean and that unclean Paul says in Romans 14 14 that there is nothing unclean of itself but to him that esteems anything to be unclean to him it is unclean Titus 15 many times when Jesus had healed someone he asked others not to tell of the healing Matthew 8 verse uh, 15 through 17 Matthew 9 verse 29 through 30 Matthew 12 verse 16 also Jesus spoke in parables and many of today's so-called Christians say that was to make them understandable to the crowds in fact Jesus spoke in parables to hide his meaning from the multitudes the parables were lessons for the disciples Matthew 13 verse 11 through 15 and 34 through 35 Jesus was hiding something from the crowds 
Jesus was not on a soul-saving mission. Jesus was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. Matthew 15, verse 24. Jesus also warned his disciples not to tell anyone he was the Christ. Matthew 16, verse 20. Luke 4, verse 41. Jesus also told his followers not to evangelize, not to go house to house. Luke 10, verse 7. Many claim that we don't know what God looks like. But Jesus said in John 14, verse 9, that you've seen me, so you've seen the Father. In Genesis, it says quite clearly, humans were created in the image of God. Nearly all Christians believe Jesus was crucified on a cross. Yet the Bible states in several places that Jesus was crucified on a tree. Acts 5, verse 30. Acts 10, verse 39. Acts 13, verse 29. Peter 2, verse 24. The Bible states that when you receive the word, you should search the scriptures to see if it is true. Acts 17, verse 11. Many so-called Christians believe that humans have immortal souls. Yet the Bible says the gift of God is eternal life, Romans 6, verse 23. If humans had immortal souls, why would they need a resurrection from the dead? 1 Corinthians 6, verse 14. The Bible in 1 Corinthians 15 pictures the first resurrection, which many regard as the rapture. This resurrection involves the 144,000, the elect. Most so-called Christians believe in the traditional concepts of heaven and hell. The good die and go to heaven, while the bad die and go to hell. Yet the Bible states, none have gone to heaven except he who came down from heaven, Jesus. All who have died are dead and in the grave. Even King David is in the grave, awaiting his resurrection. Acts 2 verse 29 through 34, John 3, verse 13. There will be a resurrection of the just and the unjust, Acts 24, verse 15. Is it easier to believe in fables and myths rather than the plain words of the Bible? Jesus was the first to be resurrected from the dead showing how things will be done according to God's plan. Acts 26, verse 23. Jesus had no immortal soul. Paul, the apostles, and Jesus all preached the kingdom of God. Acts 19, verse 8. They also taught that if you judge others, you condemn yourself. Romans 2, verses 1 through 3. God is to render judgment to every man according to his deeds. Romans 2, verse 6. This scripture is a grave disappointment to conservative Republican counterfeit Christians who want to punish gays and pornographers now. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 through 3. Christians are not to give evil for evil. Romans 12, verse 17. 
We overcome evil with good. Romans 12, verse 21. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. Romans 12, 19. Romans 14, verse 10. Those who speak in tongues must interpret if it is from God. It must not be gibberish. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 and 9 and 13 and 19 and 27 and chapter 14 through 40. God is not the author of confusion. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. The Bible states nothing concerning a rapture. Some have misinterpreted uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and Thessalonians 4 as some sort of rapture. But these picture the first resurrection and it involves the elect, not all saved Christians. The elect are raised from the dead and meet Jesus in the clouds as he is descending. The Sabbath is not on Sunday. The Sabbath is the last day of the week, Friday sundown till Saturday sundown, not the first day of the week which was instituted by the Roman Catholic Church. Hebrews 4, verse 4. Also, friendship with the world, the devil's world, is enmity with God. James 4, verse 4. This is something prosperity preachers don't understand. Christians are not to love the world. 1 John Chapter 2, verse 15 through 16. Jesus does not pray for this world. Whew, wow, that's a lot. But it's not all. But these examples, with these examples, it is clear today that 99% of those calling themselves Christians are out of step with the Bible, and they are hypocrites phonies, wolves in sheep's clothing, and many are demons. If they want to create a phony baloney religion, all well and good, but don't claim your made-up religion is based on the Bible. Don't worry, you'll still get a tax exemption. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times. So you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com.